Okay. Well, welcome everyone to STEM and Rose's seventh fireside chat. And today our speakers are Dr. Yin Shu and Ha Wan. And um, they are both senior engineers uh, from the West Coast. And would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Sure, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Ying Xu. I'm an optical engineer. I'm currently working for Amazon Lab Level 126. Um, I'm working on the sensor solution for home robot. Hello, everyone. This is Hao. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm currently in the engineering management role. So I work for a startup, Septon. Uh, our company is doing LiDAR devices. Yeah, so I, I'm in charge of design validation and manufacturing management. That's awesome. Okay. And Grace, do you want to just sit? Sure, I'll start. Um, so our first question for today, what led you to choose engineering? And do you want to give us a short survey or short summary of how you got here? Um, okay, I'll go first. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I would say um, from early on, I like um, kind of math and physics, especially uh, during middle school and high school. I really like physics. I like the um, physics, how physics can uh, explain and understand the, how word, how the world works with very simple principles um, and it, it's elegant. So when I uh, applied for college, I was considering um, physics, but then my parents saying that, you know, find something more practical. <laughs> so I ended up uh, choosing electrical engineering. Um, so with electrical engineering, uh, which is okay. And, I, and then I just went to college after college, I decided to go to the US um, to pursue my PhD. Uh, so all of these track, I wasn't really thinking what I want to do in the future. I just basically follow through. And um, that's what a study nerd would do. Basically you finish your college, then you go on with your master, then you go on with your PhD. So after PhD, then I have to make a decision what to do. And um, I kind of postponed my decision again, uh, trying to pursue a postdoc position. I, that, that was basically naturally, I wanted to go into academia. Uh, but then after a few years of doing my postdoc and uh, also working as a teaching professor for a while, I, I started to feel question my decision to stay in academia. I wanted to, uh, to take a look how the engineering work, uh, how the engineering world would work. And then I decided to quit basically uh, academia and apply for a job as engineer. And I found I really enjoy doing it. Um, that's how I ended up doing it uh, ever since. Oh, that's so nice. Very powerful. What about you, Dr. Wong? Uh, okay. <laughs> So uh, not, not many people call me Dr. Wang. Yeah, people just call me Hao. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, I, I think I didn't really chose engineering and I just uh, do the things I enjoy and I end up here. So I started to feel interested in, uh, in some hands-on work from uh, circuit design, circuit. I, I built my first, I built my first uh, radio when I was, let me see, that was uh, junior high. So that when I was 11, 12, and I started to design my first circuit when I was uh, probably 13. And I show off my, uh, my, uh, my self-built radio with my friend. And when I got into high school, I got more interested in optics optics related work. So I had the chance to do the laser interference test uh, experiment when I was in high school. I feel so uh, attracted to, to the dark room and all the, uh, all the optic experiments. 
so that I feel that I'm, I'm okay to do it. I can do it and I enjoy doing it. And I get into college. I, after I graduate from college, I feel like I want to, I, I have more curiosity about the world. I need to go further. And I came to US for my graduate school. After I graduated from, grad, uh, after I got my PhD, I, I spent a couple of years in school uh, as postdoc. And yeah, so um, I came to industry for a practical reason. Yeah, I feel like this is more realistic for me to raise a family to, to move further for my personal life. And yeah, so that's how I come here. Oh, I love that. All right. So what are some projects that you guys have worked on that you are the most proudest of or you find the most interesting? Um, for me, that was my work when I was uh, at IQ. It was a uh, er very, very early on startup. Um, when I joined, uh, I was the first, uh, I was uh, the first hardware engineer to join the, the company. And the company has a uh, has a goal. The goal is to come up with a a device that can measure your vision uh, without going to optometrist. Uh, it's basically empowering you to to check your own vision um, without needing a doctor's help. Um, and then with that, uh, you get your kind of you measure your own prescription and then you can order your glass all by yourself. Uh, so that was the vision, but there was, when I joined the company, there was nothing. It was just a concept that that's the goal we want to do, but how, how we would do it, uh, how to realize it. Uh, there was no, uh, there's, there's literally nothing in, in the scope. So my job is to, make a make a, a prototype device and came up with the design and then build a prototype and test the feasibility and eventually find a uh, company that is willing to manufacture with a reasonable price and mass produce it to the market um i would say this is a very good exercise for me to really uh, realize my dream of making something uh to benefit the, the, the whole society. And uh, within two years, we were able to, uh, to go through the whole process and, and have our product in production. Um, and we won the CES Best of Innovation with this uh, very, very low cost device. And so that's, I'm really proud of what I have done. Well, that's fascinating. I myself have really bad vision, so I feel like that definitely will benefit me on many ways and yeah. more ways than one. What about you, Ha? Yeah, so uh, I ten, more than 10 years ago, I was still in, in graduate school doing postdoc research work. At that time, actually, I, I, I enjoyed doing my uh, nanostructure study. So I build nanostructures and I play with light using those structures. Those nanostructures can uh, steer light in the way we want, can deliver the light only for the wavelengths we wanted to choose. And also it can serve as a sensor if we uh, adapt other materials onto it. So at that time, it of course that's just a dynamic research work, but I feel like there are uh, lots of unknowns for me to explore and to, to get the answer. Uh, yeah, and after I come to I came to industry, I have been working in, in, in supportive role for, for my, uh, in my, in all of my positions. So the position role means I'm not the person who designed the, the great devices. And I'm not the person who uh, came up with a, a fantastic idea, which changed the world. But to make those ideas coming true, there are lots of uh, testing will be needed, verification will be needed. And so if we design a device, at my first my, my first position in industry was a reliability engineer. So at that time, um, the company was doing LED lamp. To make the, uh, to, to make a lighting device is 
the good work, but to make the LED lamp shining, shining up in old families is totally different. We want to put this, the, the samples on testing and we want to understand how, how can we improve our manufacturing, improve the fabrication so that they were not failing, they're not failing. So uh, yeah, so that's, I, I, I still enjoy, I think those are very valuable work in STEM world. Nice, that's so cool. All right. Both of your projects actually sound so useful and helpful. Um, I actually forgot something earlier. Um, anyone in the chat, if you have questions you would like to ask our lovely speakers, um, just uh, use the chat and um, send them to me and I'll ask them at the end. Okay, uh, our next question is, do you have any advice for your younger self? Is there anything you'd like to change in your path to where you are now? Okay, um, so the thing I would tell the younger self of my, uh, myself is that um, try to be more confident. Um, don't criticize um, myself too much. I think um, as young girls uh, growing up, you when we were young, I think it's 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 natural that you feel the anxiety, you you feel the uncertainty of the future, and you feel you also feel the pressure from the society um, as a girl in the STEM world, because you are obviously the minority and um, you feel the people are questioning your ability all the time. Um, maybe not so obviously, but you do feel that um, either from your parents, your peer, your professors, uh, it's, it's a subtle feeling that you always feel that, um, that you're being questioned of, of your ability to survive in the STEM world. Um, so under that kind of pressure, I think, uh, it's natural that, that you may sometimes doubt yourself as well. Um, and and that, that's, you know, that's one of the feelings that I, I, I feel was very difficult to handle. Um, but, it, but I think eventually with years of struggling, you would get over it, um, but what I would try to say is that if I could be more confident when I was younger, um, I might handle those pressure better. I think that's really powerful and really good for our listeners to hear. Yeah. Some nice advice. Um, what about you, Hal? Well, I think you might be muted. Hal, I think you might be muted. <laughs> So I, I don't struggle for the same question uh, with, with <laughs> Ying about this. And I, I feel like we, we have been working together uh, for a couple of years. I, I feel like she is more confident than me. And I don't know, maybe people are just different. <laughs> uh, so uh, for younger me, I, I'm, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I have too much, a lot to tell a younger me. Uh, Mm, I'm, I'm not doing everything well, but I think I'm doing everything good enough for myself and for my family. So, yeah. Well said. So you're pretty satisfied with how your path went and your younger self. Thank you. You think you were... Anyway, that's fine. All right. Um, so... How would you, where and how do you get your inspiration? What inspired you to, I guess, take the paths you've taken, like um, for how, what made you choose like light technology and then bring like, how would you, how do you, how did you get into Optum? Um, it, it's, uh, I would say it's more or less um, just by chance. Uh, because I I um, I got into this particular program that's involved with uh, optoelectronics, 
Um, but I think it's more or less also because I was interested in physics. Um, and uh, there are certain parts of the optics that's really fascinating. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if, if I were given a different choice of a different uh, line of work, if I would be, uh, in, uh, I would be interested in doing as well or not. Um, but I do know I like what I do. I like to, so what I really like about this work is that I really like to solve problems. Um, I like to tackle a, a unknown or some issues that's facing and then, um, and all I need to do is to use my knowledge and my uh, experience to, to really figure out what, what was the problem and then uh, to figure out a solution to the problem. So I really enjoy this problem solving process. Um, uh, and, um, and in plus the optics in the optics field, there's a lot of physics involved, uh, which, uh, which is a perfect fit from my um, education background. So that's, um, that kind of works well for me. I don't know um, how other people would, uh, would tackle their inspiration, but for me, that feels just um, maybe a coincidence or naturally happen. That's amazing. What about you, Ha? Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably I was not fully prepared for those questions. I never feel like uh, I have a sparkling time, uh, which inspiration came to me. I think for me, inspiration um, came from my uh, the book I have read the work experience I, I had. And from those uh, little by little uh, build up experience, I have new ideas generated from there. And I have new uh, perspective uh, after, because I am that's, uh, I'm different from, my role is different from Ying's role. So I'm a lot of time, the supportive role uh, is like, we have been thinking about everything what we missed, but we never know what we, we don't know, right? So, um, yeah, keep keep up. Um, I would say that the, um, my is still, I, I don't have a good answer to this question. And uh, I, I would say, I just, keep my mind, keep keep my present with my work um, and colors what I I know and I will find I will find the corners. And so expand myself a little bit and I will find the inspiration will come to will come to me. Perfect. I really like that philosophy of just like letting what happens happen. Um, I think Sometimes we stress too much about trying to change too much. Um, our next question is a little bit different. While you were a STEM student, have you experienced any social or emotional difficulties? Um, how and where did you get help? And how did you handle the pressure? Um, so yes, um, I, being the so uh, you know let, let's say gradually you realize you um, in your class you become the minority um, for example in our college uh, class there were um, 25 male students and like five uh, female students um, and then sometimes when I went to the lab um, there was I was surrounded with only male students and the only female students. Um, and, um, and sometimes the lab work um, inside the lab, inside the lab is quite physical that you really need to uh, raise certain heavy objects um, and you need to climb up and down to try to fix things. Uh, so it is, 
it is it is uh, slightly different from what a uh, a female student is supposed is supposed to do, kind of just dress nicely and and sitting in front of the computer. No, that that's not the kind of work that I was working. I was really uh, very hands on. Um, I build up everything by myself. I carry all the heavy gears and um, doing essentially doing everything that a male student uh, needs to do. Um, that, that part doesn't really bother me, but it does bother me that, um, that you feel lonely uh, within, the, within your, your fellow students that um, you're surrounded with uh, mostly guys, not girls. Uh, so it's, it's really difficult to find emotional support uh, among each other. So I, I, to some extent, I feel lucky that my, for my PhD study, um, my professor actually has quite a few uh, female graduate students. So that, that was, that was a, a lot, that makes me feel a lot better that I'm not the only one. Um, and, and we had a lot of laughters together. So the, to have your peer support is very important, but um, sometimes you end up uh, none. Then uh, there's not much you can do about it. And um, I have always been wanting to have a kind of a senior female mentor that would kind of help me when I had issues, um, unfortunately, uh, I never had such uh, luck to have a female mentor. All, all my mentors, professors, advisors are are all uh, uh, guys. They, uh, I mean, they're 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 nice. Uh, my advisors are very nice, but um, I really would like to have a female mentor if it is possible. That would potentially help um, with my growth with my doubt uh, during the whole process, but it, it just didn't happen to me. So that really uh, kind of resonates with me that um, now I have this opportunity to talk to the, um, to the young girls that have similar issues facing similar situations that I wish that I could be of some help to you guys um, to really share my experience. So I think in general, um, the situation is getting better, I hope. Um, and, and I really would like to uh, help uh, the young girls uh, growing up with similar experience. Um, I, I guess, I, I yeah, I, I don't feel that struggle sorry <laughs> so I, I feel like probably i don't need social that's that's that, that's my answer uh, i i'm totally okay to to be the only a uh, female and i i don't i don't even acknowledge my female feature in the workplace or in social ambient so i i mean um i I'm I'm not a generalist person when I uh, when I talk with others, and that's how I see myself. So, um, for the emotional struggle, yes, there are some. There has been some. Mm. I guess we just we just I just uh, saw them as one of the technical difficulty I faced. If you really feel feel down, you let yourself relax. If you feel you're, you're, you cannot resolve it, you get help from your parents, from your friend, from doctor. All right, that's perfect. I think it's really interesting that you guys shared like two sides of the same situation. Like I find it um, really important to recognize that you might be the minority in the room, but it's also important to not let it affect you as much and also like realize that you were just as talented as everyone else in the room. So I think that's just a really nice message. And piggybacking off of that question, was there ever a moment where you felt like giving up 
and or due to any of these hardships and what motivated you to keep going um i don't i think first from the personality point of view um i don't i just don't feel like giving up um i i i like challenge um so whenever there's a challenge my attitude is always I can handle this. I can do it. Not um, this is so hard uh, that I cannot do. So my attitude is more. I think this is part of my personality. I just, I just, it's not easy for me to give up. Uh, but yeah, there are you know hardships where you feel um, where you you do feel that it's. Especially, let's say for, for the uh, graduate study, when you're working towards your PhD and you're giving a, a project and the project is not going well, you're always facing all kinds of failures, all kinds of um, conditions that's out of your control. So you feel, you do feel frustrated from, from time to time. Um, but, but I just keep pushing on. Um, I, so my attitude is that, uh, yes, it's hard, but I, I need to try everything that I could. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, the thing is, it doesn't guarantee that you would succeed in the end, but if you, if you don't, if you didn't try everything that you could, um, then if, if it fails, that you would potentially tell yourself, maybe I should have done this, maybe I should have done that. But if you really have tried everything and it still failed, then, then you could just tell yourself, okay, I've done everything I could. Um, this is beyond my control. I mean, you do, uh, you, you would accept the failure because you have done your best, but if you have not, then um, there will be always something in the back of your mind that's telling you that maybe you should have done this. Um, so, so that's that's my attitude. It's basically I do, I do try really hard to push uh, through because um, you know nobody likes to fail, um, and I especially don't like to fail. So I would I would really try try my best in order not to fail. Um, but I would also accept failure um, because that's part of life. Um, nobody can succeed all the time. But your attitude towards the hardship um, is something that you can control. The outcome is not something you can control, but your attitude is something that you can definitely control. Yeah, I totally agree with you for this. Uh, I So you, you can... I, yeah, so I, I put the other way, you, you can give up, maybe you can give up for a question in your, uh, in your exam, but you cannot give up the whole, the whole exam. And or if you feel like the whole exam is already uh, bad enough, you have to give, give it up and you cannot give up to your, to the whole course or you cannot give, eventually you will, time will, will we move yeah, and life is still ongoing right so uh, giving up could be a decision if you believe that is correct but to make to make the correct decision you have to try hard before before the decision is made and so um i i i, I guess probably that's just the common point between you and me so we also we always look into challenge that's that that makes us feel excited and uh, th this the challenge is not going to um to scare us it's a challenge is is uh is probably is a source of inspiration making the way moving forward uh, so um yeah also i would like to say um the other thing is, I would say, e even if you fail, I would uh, suggest you to move on quickly because uh, life is not just about one failure. There's multiple, multiple things ahead of you. So even if you fail at one event, it doesn't matter. Um, you just move on. Uh, and there are multiple uh, unknown futures ahead of you. 
and you you do not let one failure to put you down. Um, you have to gear up and uh, face new challenges every single yes. day. Yeah, learn learn from your failure. That's yeah. what, that's my that's my job. So if if uh, if the failure is is now it is is on you and you have to face something else and that, that's totally fine but learn from your failure is probably is also another uh, uh, another lesson I learned I, I I mean another experience I like to share with you that's great I like that's a great way to put it um, I like the idea of embracing the challenges and just understanding that sometimes stuff will happen and things might not go your way but that shouldn't be like a reason to give up and just keep staying motivated. Okay. Our next question is a little bit similar. Um, how do you strike a balance between your professional and personal lives? How do you either keep them separate or together, whichever one? Uh, yes, so um, being a mother of three, uh, that is a, um, that is a choice that I made consciously that um, that knowing fully how raising a family with three children would do to my professional career, um, I still made the choice. So the, the point is um, whenever, so we, we all make choices in our lives, right? Um, constantly. And every time you made a choice, you made the choice based on the best knowledge that you have of your life till that point. Um, you cannot uh, foresee what's going to happen in the future. You can only make the best judgment based on what have what has happened till then. Um, and you make the choice. And then after that, that's it. Uh, and then you just continue with your life. I... I don't like to say, you know, people sometimes say, okay, do you regret to make this decision? Uh, do you regret to make that uh, decision? Do you regret to um, decide to do this or do that? I, I don't think that way. I think whenever I made the choice in the past, my decision was based on <clears throat> my best judgment at that point. Even if uh, let's say years later, I figured uh, that may not be the best choice uh, but that was based on the knowledge that has happened afterwards. That's not what I would have known at that at the point when I made the decision. So there's really no point of uh, of regretting. Uh, so the decision is made, and that's the best decision that I have ever made. Um, so I trust the previous myself to make the best decision. So making a decision of balancing between the professional and personal life, um, I. I I, uh, I was I was aware that having um, children or multiple children could potentially cause uh, at the cost of my professional uh, life, but um, but you made the decision with full knowledge of that uh, potential because every time you make a decision, um, you choose uh, something over the other, then you have to know that there is a cost to your to your decision for example uh the cost to to slowing down on my professional um career because of having more children um so you need to know what kind of potential consequences that you would potentially have um then you would still make this decision then you would not uh kind of be surprised or feel regret uh, years later saying that, oh, maybe I should have not done that. Um, yeah, so, so the point is every de decision has consequences. And as long as when you are making the decision and you are aware of the consequences and you are still willing to make these, uh, to have these consequences, then I think I feel okay with my decision. And that's my take on the uh, personal life and professional life. Yes, I, when I was making the decision, I was aware that I would, uh, there will be some uh, impact on the professional uh, life. 
But that's the choice that I have already made. And I was very clear about that. And I'm, I'm still willing to do that. I handle my life in an imbalanced way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so uh, just be creative. And I think everything will, will, will keep going. Um, you know, our, our company, so there is no life, life, uh, life, work life balance. And that's why I brought kids to, 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 to work a lot. And that gives them the chance to see how a company run, how everyone works in the company. And they started, uh, for, the, for the kid I trust, she started to generate some idea for herself, what she wants to be and how she wants to work uh, in her future. I think that's also, that's not a balanced way, but that's an interesting way for them to grow up. That's, mm, I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I saw house kids at the company all the time. <laughs> yeah, so actually during COVID, they, they stay in offices a lot more than most of professionals. Yep. So they grew up surrounding, being surrounded in the environment, which is I like, they were. Yeah, sometimes if I need a little helper, I just grab the one who is capable enough to help me. So last time, Ying probably you you didn't know. Last time they uh, I I went there during COVID, the very early COVID. It's probably the in the May 2020s. So everyone just uh, everyone stay home. So I I went to our lab to do a, a thermal derating testing. In that testing, I have to heat up the, the sun, heat up the chip, and meanwhile reach the power consumption. And that's not a one person work. So Sophie started to help me reading the number, although she doesn't have, she has no idea about what number that means. But yeah, so she started to see uh, how the basic uh, technician level engine uh, work is being done, and they talk with, and they this helped our mechanical and Dylan helped. Chris helped our mechanical engineer to do a couple screws and he gave up, unfortunately. So he started to see how people build machine, build their, uh, build their, and uh, build machines. So they have a little bit exposure. I think this, just like how that happened to me. Yeah. So when I was young, I also got that chance. Um, the balance, the work life balance doesn't mean it has to be one way or the other. So uh, I believe every, everything counts, every effort counts. If they really enjoy or give them the chance to see how professional work, give the chance to kids how professional work runs also will have influence to them. So I believe those are positive influences. Yeah, I bet they had a great time. I remember I was always super excited to visit like my parents' offices and just be in that adult and grown up environment. I think it's also interesting because it's the question of are you incorporating your personal life into your career or are you incorporating your career into your personal life? So I guess that's like what you debate over the question. Yeah. Okay. With the, yeah, with the working from home, that that the boundary between personal life and the professional life really got got re very, very uh unclear. <laughs> yeah, blurred so completely. Uh, messed up um so so you see uh, I, I still remember you know basically seeing people's kids go into uh the camera from time to time during the, <laughs> during the meeting uh so yeah i think we we just get used to it nowadays and our final question on the list um there might be some more from the chat later but um, do you have any books or resource recommendations for Seven Rose members or any like ways for them to get started in engineering? Um, I, I think um, for the for the engineering part, um, it has to be that it's that is your interest that you really enjoy working on it. Um, I don't think people can, can do well if they don't really like um, engineering from the beginning, then uh, there's, it, it, it's, it's difficult. Uh, if you're interested in somewhere else and you're asked to do engineering work, that's probably not ideal. 
Um, uh, regarding books, I do uh, like um, a book called The Road Less Travel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of um, not really kind of engineering related, but it, but it tells a lot about how people behave, uh, how humans behave with certain things. And it talks about, uh, it, it, it helps you to understand why um, we do something, we, why we behave certain ways. And it tells you, um, it, it not necessarily tell you that uh, you are, if you're not doing exactly what the book was saying that you're screwed, no, it's just try to explain to you why, you're, why you did certain uh, behavior that you feel that maybe you could have improved. Uh, so it helps you to, I think I would say it helps you to understand human nature better. It helps you to understand yourself. It helps to uh, make peace of yourself that uh, that certain that why uh, you were behaving certain ways and um, yeah try to, so so that you could potentially consciously help yourself um, down the road so it, it's a kind of a personal uh, personal uh, enrichment instead of anything to do with engineering but I think it's a it's a good book for any uh, anybody with any age. <laughs> I might, I might check that book out myself. I haven't, I haven't seen or heard of it before. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty old book. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I said, I think it's for for people of any age. Maybe it's maybe it's too early for younger uh, uh, for younger generations. But um, maybe down the road, you will pick up the book. Yeah. So I don't have an engineering book to recommend to you. I believe actually, I, I believe you, you are more, you are, you are a lot better than the, the than me at your age. So, and now even I asked my daughter to recommend books for me, I think mm, um, I, I need to listen to the younger people. And however, on the other side, my recommendation is uh, to read less bestsellers read some older book so those books are there are still there, there are lots of bestsellers all the time but lots, most of them probably will not be remembered or will not be read after 10 years so the old book you can still find where the old books you can still see lots of reviews that is an indicator telling you this is a or worthy one this is a available one Lovely. I I think that's really nice. All right, Grace, do you have any more to add? Uh, from our chat, we've got a couple questions to sort of wrap up our meeting. Our first one relates to one of our earlier questions. Ying, I think you talked about like um, your advice for your younger self was to have more confidence. Um, someone from the chat asked, do you have any tips for boosting your confidence? Um, how do you keep the self-doubt uh, um, at bay when you get it? Yeah, um, I think the, um, the advice will be uh, to forgive yourself. Um, yeah, everybody makes mistakes. Um, you know, for example, you know you should have been um, studying your, your math uh, at this point, but sometimes you just feel lazy. Sometimes you just maybe zoom out or you just, um, just check checking your TikTok and you just forget about time, uh, things of that nature. I think that that happens to everybody, uh, not just children, uh, even adults. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. So the point is um, you should forgive yourself for making a mistakes uh, once in a while. Um, you should give yourself a, a slack from time to time. Uh, I know that you know high school kids. I'm even though my so my oldest one is turning to the um, freshman uh, this September. Um, I, I heard I, I wasn't sure, but I heard that the high school years are crazy. The the kids are staying really late, doing all kinds of projects. So yeah, I I I feel you. Um, I also had a very, uh, well, maybe not as bad of a high school year, but uh, the point is just give yourself a slack. Um, you, you take a, you, you know, you take a, take a break from certain things you, or you did something that you 
later on you think that maybe uh, you shouldn't have done or you could have done better, that's okay. Um, that's just, that's not the end of the word. As long as, um, as long as you have enough confidence in, you, in yourself, you know that you can, you know you can, you can go over that, uh, that hump. Um, so, so if, you know, basically do not let that um, self-doubt uh, beat you down is the most important thing. Uh, because just at the end of the day, if you don't trust your, yourself, if, if you don't love yourself, um, how could the world, uh, who could, how could anybody else uh, like you or, or treat you as a worthy friend? Uh, you have to be self-confident enough to show that uh, you are a lovely person that people should hang out with you. So if you don't, uh, if you even don't trust yourself, then it's just really difficult to navigate through the society. Um, that's, that's really, I think that's really important. And I, and I personally, I go through the same situation with all of you. Um, and I, and I think in the end, like in my forties, I, I finally feel really relaxed and feel confident with myself, but I really would hope that everybody, every kid, every girl should, uh, growing up with more confidence in themselves. Would you like to add anything, How about boosting confidence or just feeling better about yourself? Um, I, I think one, one good point on myself probably is I'm totally okay being not liked. So I that gives me the bottom line for me to rest on. So I know who I am. I, uh, I, 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 I agree with Ying that the me time, the idle time actually is ben very beneficial for yourself, yeah. especially the young people. So that's, although you probably feel idle, you feel like you are not doing anything uh, meaningful, but you need to sit down and think about and enjoy yourself. So once you know who you are, you probably, I don't mind if people don't like me. I don't mind if people critic me and I, I think we don't have to be the same. So it's okay they think the other way. And I, I don't think if I know I'm not doing wrong, that's fine. Yeah, I, I yeah, also wanted to say this me time is really important. That um, to me, that's where I, uh, I can basically cure myself. The me time is where I cure myself uh, that I, I gain, I gain um, strength, I gain- um, Yeah, recharging a little Recharging bit. myself, exactly. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's very important, is to have a me time. I think that um, sort of balances, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. I think that kind of balance is really important. I like that you added that. Um, Alice, do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, I think that's, I was just gonna say that, that's super nice. And I think everyone needs to hear that just to have some, everyone should just appreciate themselves and yeah, yeah, just be comfortable. All right, to sort of close out our meeting, do any, do either of you have any short stories that you would like to share with us from your journey? Um, anything interesting, notable, things that changed you? Just any quick stories throughout your stories um yeah i uh okay maybe i can share a short story so after my after i received my uh doctor's degree um i took a break uh from everything i just went back to china and i um i basically have a me time for like six months <laughs> And I, I wasn't doing anything professional. I was traveling a little bit. Um, I also went to a kind of a country countryside, like a little countryside school where I teach the, the poor kids um, for, for like two months. And I think that that experience was very uh, eye widening for me. And also that changes my mind 
um, because uh, I was, you know, I was born in the city, raised up in the city, and then I went to the U.S. So I, I literally have no idea how the countryside or how the, uh, you know, the the poor society would function and how people uh, in the remote countryside would live, and that gave me the first hand experience, like how they, what they eat, um, how they handle um, everything, uh, daily life, daily routine, from the bathroom to <laughs> to to uh, to taking showers. So all all, all of those, uh, it was a very uh, enriching experience. But the most important thing is uh, to interact with the. The kids. So I was in my twenties, and my students are like your age, uh, teenagers. So I was maybe just ten years, or not even ten years older than them. Um, but because of the different experience that we have growing up in the countryside versus growing up in the city, uh, there is a huge uh, gap between our uh, what we have experienced and what we perceive of the world. Um, and I found it very, very uh, enriching for me to understand uh, what the other side of the story is, how they perceive the world. Um, and and I, I, feel, I feel sorry for them um, because growing up in the countryside without much uh, educational support uh, with their parents not home all the time, um, they are really missing out a lot of opportunities that um, people outside of the countryside would have. Um, but I think giving them the, the proper uh, opportunities, they would, you know, they would flourish, um, but they just, um, yeah, it's, it's hard for them to, to get out of the, um, the environment, but they're trying, you know, they're, they're trying because um, one of, I, re, I still remember one of the female uh, student was telling me, so she was, I think, 16 years old, and she was telling me that um, she wanted to get out of the, uh, the life there, because uh, if she didn't continue with the high school, she would end up with his uh, previous classmates um, that that at the age of 16, they're probably married and having kids and living all their life in the countryside. And she didn't want to do that. Um, so that's, that's really shocking to me, um, how life can be different um, for, uh, for girls uh, at that age. Um, and I really admire her for the determination that she wanted to change her life. Um, so yeah, so, so that, that experience really uh, opens up my mind um, to perceive the world in, in very different ways. Do you have anything to add, Ham? Or? No. Sorry, no. All right, perfect. All right, I guess that concludes, well, that concludes today's fireside chat. Thank you so much to our speakers, Ying and Hao, for speaking with us today. Um, I definitely took your experiences to heart, and I feel like I learned a lot, and I bet our listeners did too. Um, any final remarks, Grace? Um, no, that's it. Um, I'm really glad you guys were able to make it. Uh, I think what the advice you gave was really meaningful. I'm sure everyone really appreciated it. That's great. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming.